Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I welcome you all to another session of RBI 247, wherein we discuss finance current affairs that are going to be relevant for RBI grade B exam and SEBI grade A exam and any exam that you're preparing for, which covers finance current affairs. Let's get on with today's session. Today we are going to read three news. The first one is going to be Digital Payment Awareness Week 2023. This is brought out by RBI, very important for RBI exam. Second one is about pump and dump. I hope you have heard about this pump and dump scheme pump and dump scheme or the pump and dump scam. Let's see ki what is it and how is it going to be relevant for our exam. The third one is about Hindu rate of growth. Again, I hope you have heard about this pump and dump scheme. This has been in news quite some, for quite some time now. Okay, so the first news that we're going to talk about today is about Digital Payment Awareness Week. A very important news. Exam may bohat high chances ke baare mein aapko question a sakta hai. So RBI has launched a Digital Payment Awareness Week. Naam se hi clear hai what is the purpose of this Awareness Week? Digital payment pe focus hai hai. So the RBI as well as the government wants that there should be, you know, technological penetration towards payment system in India. Already we see that there has been a revolution in the payment and settlement system mechanism in India. You know, from making payments through cash or through checks or through demand drafts to now that we're making payments through UPI or any other payment service providers that we're using. For example, Google Pay, Amazon Pay or wallets, PPI instruments. So the, there has been a revolution in digital payment infrastructure. So the digital payment ka concept, hi, it was very limited. Now it is not just broadened, but almost every person in every family is now using digital payments, right? That is the goal of RBI, to increase the penetration of technology towards payment system in India, so that digital payment ko promotion ho and also cashless economy ban sake. That has been the focus, we all know, since this government took up, that has been the focus ki, to make a cashless economy. Okay, so RBI launched a mission in this awareness week. The mission was Har Payment Digital. Now it is clear from the name itself, Har Payment Digital means that RBI wants that every payment, every payment that is taking place to be digital. So Har Payment digital. That is the focus of RBI. Like I said, to increase penetration of digital transactions in the payment spectrum. So a part of RBI's endeavor to make every person in India a user of digital payments. So that cashless economy can be made digitally our payment kar sake. Why? So the focus, what will be the benefit of digital payment or enhancing digital payments? Or why does RBI is focusing on that? The first and foremost is yes, to create a cashless economy. Other than that, Digital payments create a transparent mechanism of payment at the same time, you know, it takes, it uh, saves a lot of time. So easy, accessible uh, payment mechanism, you don't have to go to bank every time to make payment or to make payment of a larger amount. You don't have to carry cash, so hassle free ho jata hai. So hassle free, uh, cashless economy, transparent mechanism, ease and access. So accessibility, RBI wants to provide to every person in India. Not just in the urban sector, but also in the rural sector as well. So, ye news nahi sirf phase one ke liye important hogi, but also for phase two. Uh, descriptive answer writing may it can be asked: What is the government doing towards digital payment? How important is digital payment awareness for the government as well as for the RBI? Or what has been the mechanism or the steps taken by RBI along with the government for digital payment or digital penetration in the payment system? So, isme aap bahut sare points likh sakte hain. We will discuss a lot in this exam. Ye, uh, in this lecture and this can also be asked in descriptive answer writing or essay writing so essay writing maybe an essay can be asked about digital payment infrastructure okay recently if you have uh, sidvi exam mein, a question was all was asked about the financial sector and the payment sector in india for essay writing so essay writing maybe essay questions can be asked we are going to fetch a lot of points from this news today so digital payment awareness week 2023 it was observed from march 6 to March 12th, uh, 2023, it is still being observed. A campaign, the campaign hai awareness week, ka, the theme of the campaign will be payment up now, or ko bhi sikhao, which means to create awareness. Under this, what will happen under this awareness program, a lot of outreach programs will be taken up by not just banks, but also non-banks. And also outreach programs will be taken up by payment system providers, operators, payment system operators. So the theme this time has been payment up now or ko bhi sikhao. It can be asked in your exams. So the RBI governor also and the RBI governor also gave a, an address on this event. We'll have a look at what he said in his address. But first, let's fetch some points for our answer writing. So digital payments offer benefits of speed, convenience, safety and security. Now you do not have to carry a large amount of cash or you do not have to travel to a bank to get a check or DD. 
सो वो ट्रांसफर करने के लिए यू कैन मेक पेमेंट अक्रॉस एनी वेयर इन इंडिया नाउ इवन अब्रॉड सिटिंग एट होम थ्रू यू पी आई मैकेजम ओके इट इज नेसेसरी टू क्रिएट मोर अवेयरनेस सो दैट देर कुड बी लार्जर पेनिट्रेशन एंड एवरी पर्सन इन इंडिया कैन यूज डिजिटल पेमेंट्स दैट इज वाई एक्सेसिबिलिटी बढ़ाने के लिए एक्सेप्टेंस बढ़ाने के लिए पीपल आर नॉट गोन एक्सेप्ट डिजिटल पेमेंट्स बिकॉज ऑफ वेरियस अप्रीहेंशन दैट दे माइट हैव about this if they are unaware so to create awareness so that more awareness can be created uh, this will be working towards this campaign will work towards that as well so the governor appealed governor gave an address wherein he appealed all the stakeholders be it banks non banks payment system operators digital payment users as well to uh, adopt the digital payments and teach others also so that was the theme payment up now digital payment up now aur ko bhi sikhao that was the theme so a lot of stakeholders are a lot of stakeholders are invited are asked by the governor government governor has made an appeal to all the stakeholders to adopt digital payments as well as ask others to adopt digital payments so awareness badhao so adopt digital payments and also teach others that has been the theme okay so under this under this event under this campaign what is going to take place is sabse pehle the focus will be on conducting awareness and outreach programs these will be done by both non banks and banks or other uh, operators other stakeholders as well that are working towards digital payment system so up this these will work towards jan bhagidari events so jan bhagidari events ho rahe hain under the g20 presidency so we all know india has taken up uh, as the presidency of g20 for a year uh, since i think yes december 2022 se india has been in the presidency november or december India has been the presidency of G20, and under that, various events are taking program, uh, taking uh, in process, are in process, and Jan Bhagidari events are going to be taking up. Now, in Jan Dhar, Jan Bhagidari ka meaning kya? What is the meaning of Jan Bhagidari? Means participation of people. So everyone should participate in various events that will work towards various sectors. So RBI ka jo sector, one of the sectors that RBI has chosen is towards digital awareness. So all the campaigns that are going to be taking place this. will form part of the jan bhagidari events which is working under the india's g20 presidency iske andar rbi ne very recently rbi also conducted a three day trade fair where an entrepreneurs will come up and uh, you know they'll set up stalls towards this will help small businesses and entrepreneurs so ye bhi hua tha so a lot of events are taking place under this jan bhagidari event that is going on along with that another discussion took place under this was 75 digital village programs important hai exam mein aa sakta hai agar nahi bhi aata hai in any answer writing if you you know write such points the examiner will be very happy and you might get good marks so payment system operators what are payment system operators these are legal entities that are working towards the payment system in india chahe wo transactions ki ho ya koi bhi payment system ho wherein either money is involved or you know money is not involved but transaction clear karne mein help mechanism transaction clear karne ke mechanism mein if any uh, le you know legal entity is working towards that that is also under payment system operator for example clearing house corporation so what does what is the aim jo bhi transactions ho rahi hai unko clear karna working towards stock market so stock market mein uh, you know it is not just always money that is uh, you know transacting between people it is also the stocks that are exchanged between people so anything that involves payment mechanism and any legal entity working towards payment mechanism will be under payment system operators so these payment system operators will adopt 75 villages across the country and convert them into digital payment enabled villages these psos will adopt 75 villages they they will adopt 75 villages and what will they do they will convert them into digital payment enabled villages like i said to increase penetration of technology towards the payment system in india not just in the urban sector but also now in the rural sector that is the aim of rbi isliye village adoption scheme has been taken place under this let's see the governor's address this is very important bahut sare points aapko yahan se milenge that you can write in your exams so under this what happened firstly the launching of the mission har payment digital important hai yaad rakhiyega under the digital payment awareness week it reinforces the rbi's commitments to deepen digital payments in the country along with that currently department of payment and settlement system is working we all know the department of payment and settlement system is working towards payment and settlement and also they had their 18th anniversary and the governor wish them luck you know celebrated the 18th anniversary this was opened up in march on march 7 2005 
to this department department of payment and settlement system the governor also talked about how the department of payment and settlement system has worked towards payment system to bringing a revolution especially uh, in digital payments so the governor talked about that and over the years the system uh, the payment system has evolved and now have multiple system around working around the clock okay so yes an important data 1000 transactions every month since december through digital transactions so the digital transactions by 1000 more than 1000 crore digital transactions have taken place since only december and also it's my bohat bada role hai digital transactions mein upi ka upi has played a very major role that was one of the very important points of discussion in this awareness week and in the governor's address the governor talked about uh, UPI, how UPI has held unified payment interface. It was launched in 2016 and it has played a major role in digital, pay uh, digital payment system. And 75% of the total digital transactions are only through UPI. So UPI may starting from 1700 crore to now I think around 1.2 lakh crore transactions are taking place only under UPI. So yes, abhi kahi data aajayega. Okay, so UPI that was launched in 2016, that was the major focus of this awareness campaign and the governor's address. And the volume of UPI transaction has increased manifold from 0.45 crore. This is the number of transactions, the volume of transaction to 804 crore in January 2023. The volume of UPI transaction has increased, the amount of payments made, the amount of payment made through UPI has also increased. Okay. Let's see the value of UPI transactions, like I said, increased from 1700 crore to 1 point, so to 12.98 lakh crore. This is a manifold increase if you see in the world, in the amount of UPI transactions, the value of UPI transactions from 1700 crore to now 12.98 crore. Important data you can answer writing mein use kar sakte hai. even in your interviews. If you talk about such points, uh, that will be very impressive. Okay, so Digital Payment Awareness Week will further the deepen will further deepen the usage and footprint of digital payments across India. So, okay, along with that, the governor also talked about other payment mechanism that has been created by NPCI over the years. For example, Bharat Bill Payment System. Very recently, we have talked about a lot of, uh, you know, products that are developed by the NPCI, payment mechanisms that are developed by the NPCI. One of them is Bharat Bill Payment System. It is a one-stop solution wherein you can make payments, bill payments from anywhere around the world bill payments around India. Bill payments can be made through Bharat Bill Payment System. So yes, the governor talked about Bharat Bill Payment System ensured migration of bill payments from cash or checks to digital mode and hassle-free and streamlining digital bill payment system. Bharat Bill Payment Mechanism ki conversations with the also electronic toll collection. This may fast tag bhi jata hai. Now it is through fast tag. So electronic toll collection, national electronic toll collection mechanism Along with that, NACH, that is National Automated Clearing House. The governor also talked about that. So these are the few payment mechanisms that have revolutionized the payment system in India. Okay, the payment mechanism in India. So it helps in direct benefit transfers, not just for the government, but also, uh, you know, any sector working towards high volume payment mechanism or high volume transactions. Okay. So for example, a company, if it wants to trans make dividend payments to a lot of people at the same time, High volume people, high value transactions have to be made to a lot of people. It can be made through National Automated Clearing House. And these payments can be repetitive in nature. So it has also helped government DBT direct benefit transfer. And 8.34 crore farmers have benefit, benefited under the PM Kisan mechanism. Wherein farmers get cash uh, and, and direct benefit transfer through direct benefit transfer measure. Also, the governor talked about the UPI pay now mechanism. We very recently talked about this. Both recently he had this. Wherein UPI of India and pay now of Singapore, uh, the you know users of UPI and pay now can make cross border transactions. Cross border remittances can be made through this mechanism. Okay, so cross border linkage of fast payment settled system in India and Singapore UPI pay now. The governor also talked about that. Other than that. The governor also talked that this linkage, uh, a lot of other countries are now working towards cre creating such linkages through India. So, there are many countries hai which want to you know, collaborate with India, just like Singapore did. So, the countries currently working are Bhutan, Singapore has, a, we have also already have a mechanism, the QR based mechanism, that is the UPI pay now linkage mechanism for Singapore. Along with that, UAE is also currently in conversations with India 
to have a similar mechanism for cross border payment system cross border remittance transfer okay and also ye hum bahut bari pad chuke hain rbi allowed visitors from g20 countries to make payments in india p2m person to merchant mechanism ke through payments through upi without having any bank account in india upi wallet wallet may you can get your money and through upi you can make transactions person to merchant transactions uh, for all the g20 countries visitors from the g20 countries okay so like i had said the message of this was digital payment up now aur ko bhi sikhao so that awareness can be created ab is message se hi aapko samajh aa raha hoga the governor is talking towards awareness okay and not just one person but all the stakeholders are advised or appealed by the governor to make awareness about digital payment and to adapt digital payment mechanism okay and this will work this will work in sync with the payment vision 2025 so ye jo awareness week hai jo ye campaign hai the mission uh, you know har payment digital mission this will work in line with the payment vision of 2025 payment vision 2025 bahut important hai exam ke liye this Uh, the theme of this was e payments for everyone everywhere every time very important agar aap exam de rahe hain especially in phase for phase 2 descriptive answer writing ke liye just have a look at the payment vision 2025 very important so this uh, mission that rbi has launched will work in line with this which is working on the theme of every payment sorry e payment for everyone every time everywhere now we talked about 75 village adoption 75 village scheme yes village adoption scheme wherein the payment system operators the payment system operators will adopt 75 villages they will adopt 75 villages and create these villages into digital payment villages okay so it means any entity what is a, pay, a digital what is a payment system operator a payment system operator is any legal entity that is responsible for operating a payment mechanism so jo bhi ek entity that is working towards payment system payment operation system is a payment system operator for example amazon pay npci so npci we all know is working towards payment mechanism in india other than that ccl clearing house is also working as a payment system operator wherein what they do is they help in transacting transaction of money uh, between two parties so transactions mein financial transactions mein jo bhi entities legal entities help karti hain they work towards payment system in india that is a payment system operator for example amazon pay or google or npci okay so the second news that we're going to talk about is pump and dump i hope aap sab logo ne ye sun hi liya hoga this has been in news for quite some time now bahut zyada charcha mein tha what is this pump and dump so what happens in stock market is we already know that stock market is very volatile and you know uh, fluctuations bit, uh, or price fluctuations of prices of stocks keep taking place every time in stock uh, stock market which means it is very volatile ab volatility ki wajah se prices bahut zyada fluctuate hote hain and uh, you know the investors are have to be risk averse or they can take into they high risk right so ab ye mechanism stock mechanism is already very risky on top of that when you involve a lot of scams that are taking place today it becomes more volatile right and investors become more risk averse they don't want to take averse uh, risk so aisa hi ek mechanism hai that is pump and dump jo ki abhi recently news mein aaya hai what happens under this is any person who has a stock in any company what they can do is they can create they can mislead they can mislead investors or manipulate the price of stock how by giving any information that will pump or boost the prices of stock or create more demand for that particular stock so when demand is increased and there is a limited supply of anything and demand rises what happens the price will rise if the supply is limited so what the, uh, these you know investors or anybody who who has a stake in any stock or in of a company what they do is they want to pump demand they want to pump the price of any stock so that when the stock prices increases in the market they can sell their stock and gain a lot of profit so for example today if you purchase a stock for let's say rupees 100 and by spreading any information you create by or a false information about that stock about that company who's investing in that stock or any company working who has the stock so jis bhi company ka ye stock hai ya shares hai you want to raise the price what will what will you do you will mislead or if you have an influence to uh, over a larger audience you can manipulate the price of the stock 
So for example, if you manipulate the price of this stock of 100 rupees and it reaches to 1000 rupees through increasing demand or any information that you have brought up, what the person who's having th these stocks, they can sell it and have a profit of 900 in the process. So what happens is stock manipulators or fraudsters, what they do is they pump the price or they boost the price and then sell the stock, which means they dump the stock. So this, therefore, this mechanism is known as pump and dump wherein you are pumping the prices first and then dumping the stocks that you have okay therefore making a lot of profit in the entire process so it is a stock manipulation scheme where the prices of stock is pumped or boosted by spreading false information any false information or recommendation so when if you are an influencer and you influence the investors to invest in any company or to buy certain stocks of any company because of any information that you have or this information could be fake. Usually it's a fake information. So what they do is they pump the prices. How? By recommending the investors to invest in that stock or in that company. So when you recommend your investors, uski demand bad jayegi, demand badega, the price of that stock will increase. And thus, at the end of the day, you can sell the stock and gain a lot of profit. So these recommendations are based on false misleading and are greatly exaggerating statements. Fraudulence have a position in a company stock after pumping, they dump their own stock. So they already have certain stock uh, wherein in that company, wherein they are, you know, pumping the stocks and then dumping it. They're selling it at high prices. The claims are false and uh, misleading. Okay, so how is the schemes used? Uh, Three-step process here. I've already explained. Pump and dump scheme. First, a person buys a significant holding in a stock. You will stock in uh, a company ka stock. Ap a significant holding in that stock and then you make exaggerated claims about that company so recently this can be through you know social media mechanism emails get through you can do that or if you if you have an influence on any other platform for example youtube so very recently youtube scam hua hai ye. youtube manipulation this is called wherein a company manipulates or gives false information through social media platforms in this case it was youtube okay so uh, he makes exaggerated, exaggerated claims about the company, encouraging people to pump their money into it and thus they buy uh, more. When, it, when people are attracted towards a stock, what will happen is because of volatility, the stock price will increase. Lastly, the stock price goes up and he or she dumps it and pockets the gain. Ab, recently, the information is spread using YouTube videos on two channels, that is Advisor and Moneywise and a certain uh, you know, film stars have also been accused of doing this and SEBI has barred these, these uh, film stars from operating on stock exchange or buying and selling on stock exchange. So I've already explained this. Under SEBI, so under SEBI guidelines, someone who spreads false information is called MMD, that is misleading message disseminator. Misleading message disse disseminator. Okay, so how does SEBI identify the pump and dump scam? Firstly, SEBI uses the data warehousing and business intelligence system, a system of SEBI wherein SEBI can get information through anything that has been manipulating the stock mechanism or stock prices. To identify such scams, it provides a pattern recognition algorithm. So, a pattern dekha jata hai. If, you know, a lot of investors are attracted towards a company which is not beneficial or which is not in news very much, right? So, agar small stocks bhi hote hai, jaise. So if a lot of investors are attracted towards a company's stock, that creates a pattern. And after a certain time, if people holding high stocks in that company, they sell these stocks only when the prices go up and suddenly they sell these stocks, that creates a pattern. So SEBI recognizes this pattern through an algorithm mechanism and thus SEBI identifies these scams. So this is the modus operandi of the scam. You can read it from here. The third news that we're going to talk about today is about Hindu rate of growth. Again, there are news mein hai. I'm sure you all have heard So the former governor, governor of RBI, Mr. Raghuram Rajan, he talked about Hindu rates of growth. Now, this has nothing to do with Hindu religion, but it generally talks about how the rate of growth has been in the economy. So when we say that Hindu rate of growth, yes, we're not talking about any religion, but we're talking about a pattern of growth that has been following. That is the growth has stuck. So what was happening was before 1990s or let's say during 50s to during 1980s during 1950s to during 90s 80s the gdp growth the gdp growth was stuck to less than 3 to 4 percent so 4 percent say mostly the gdp growth has been lower than 4 percent this was majorly because of 
you know, socialist policies of the government along with that import substitution. It was, you know, India, we had a closed economy. Only after 1991, we opened up our economy after the LPG mechanism. So, LPG ke baad hi India opened up hui hai. Before that, it was a closed economy. Exports and imports were limited. And, you know, foreign exchange was regulated. It was not managed. We had para before 1991. So, uh, because of import substitution and socialist policies, liberalization nahi hui thi. A lot of private entities, if they wanted to come up, that was not possible. Only public sector had, had a major role in the economy. And public sectors were, public in industries were major, playing a major part in the economy towards contribution of GDP. So, because of that, the, you know, the pace of GDP growth was limited, it was stuck. That is known as Hindu rate of growth. So, the Ar former RBI governor has said, that the it the uh, uh, you know the gdp of india the growth of india is dangerously close to the hindu rate of growth now why has the statement been made very recently i think two three videos ago we talked about the q3 gdp data so gdp data for the third quarter of this year that is october to december has been 4.4 percent which was decreased from i think around 6.5 percent before it it was 13 percent so Q1 may it was 13%, Q2 may it was around 6.5% and Q3 may it was 4.4%. And it has seen a decrease. Now, ye to data hai, this is year on year data, which means Q1 data of this year is compared with Q1 data of the previous year. This is year on year data. It is not compared with the previous quarter. It is compared with the same quarter of the previous year. So, humne jab tha ki why has this, uh, you know, why has there been a reduction in growth this time? The reason of reduction of growth that we understood was threefold reasons were there. The first one was high inflation. Because of high inflation, because of high inflation, uh, jo tha interest rates RBI ne increase kare the, that becomes another reason. High interest rates, credit growth itni nahi ho rahi thi, and deposit growth itni nahi ho rahi thi, and at the same time, uh, you know. Inflation was a lot more than that, GDP growth was a lot more than that. So GDP wasn't increasing because of high inflation, because of high interest rate, because of uh, low liquidity in the economy. That was also one of the reasons RBI was pulling liquidity from the economy because of its accommodative stance or hawkish monetary policy stance. So high inflation ki se, RBI had to steps lene pade, which led to high interest rates. And along with that, the other reason that we talked about was low base. So these were the reasons that we talked about for uh, falling GDP, especially for quarter third. The third reason was low base. So the uh, low base tha, that faded away. So initially, the 3% growth in quarter one was because COVID-19 pandemic ki wajah se, the base growth level tha, that was low. So when you have a low base effect, what happens is even a small increase feels like a huge increase. That is why double digit growth hume lag rahi 13%. Because last year ka base hi bohat zyada kam tha. Last year there was not a lot of growth. And this uh, quarter 3 mein there was quite a lot of growth because of which the base effect tha, the low base effect that faded away. So fading of the low base effect. These were the three reasons that we talked about last time uh, for falling GDP. Now uh, based on that, the governor said the uh, former governor said that it is leading to Hindu rate of growth. Now, a lot of economists believe that it is not actually a Hindu rate of growth or it would be not appropriate to call it, uh, you know, a falling GDP or the fact that it's Hindu rate of growth because uh, there are a lot of factors involved with falling GDP. And it is not just because of this quarter, but also because firstly, we had COVID, which has, you know, ripple effects in the economy even now. That is one of the things that the economists are saying now. Okay, so the rate of growth is persistently slow and accompanied by low per GDP. This is the meaning of Hindu rate of growth. This term was coined by Raja Krishna in 1978. This was based on the GDP data that was taking place since 1950s to 1980s. Only after 1991, the country moved towards liberalization, privatization and globalization. Before that, the growth rate was stuck uh, below 4%. So when the growth rate was stuck below 4%, that is what we call the Hindu rate of growth, which means low rate of growth. So low uh, growth, hogi, slow growth in the economy along with low per capita GDP. So this low grade situation was termed as a result of, like I explained, socialist policies and import substitution. So India before 1991 was towards, you know, a closed economy, not open up as compared to now or post liberalization. Okay, so how India's GDP has been growing over a couple of years, we'll see that. 
The Indian economy plunged to its very first technical recession. So during COVID, uh, the country led to, uh, you know, went towards technical recession. What is this technical recession? Where growth rate for two consecutive quarters is falling. That is technical recession. When two quarters the growth rate continuously fall, hoti hai, then it is termed as a technical recession. So during COVID-19, we all know it was a technical recession. Just ki after effects abhi tak dekhe ja rahe hai, that is one of the reasons that, you know, the economist says that it is not a Hindu rate of growth, which means the economy is not stuck to that growth. It will move, uh, you know, beyond that, beyond this uh, rate of growth. So the GDP shrunk by an unprecedented 23.8%. We all know in the first quarter of the financial year of 2021 because of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is not news to us. We all are already aware of that. Ki minus 23% ki growth hui thi. 23.8% ki. Okay. But because of economic activities uh, going forward, there in the subsequent quarters, the GDP decline started to narrow. GDP decline come hone laga and there was recovery in GDP. Okay, so India's, girl, India's low growth curve has, India's growth curve shows a declining trend after the COVID-19. India's growth rate was declining, but it took towards recovery after COVID-19 pandemic since 2021. There has been a recovery and this low growth rate is part of recovery that has been set by the economist. Yes, this brings us to the end of today's session. Uh, okay, so... Uh, towards the end, I just want to say that digital payment ke liye jo bhi news thi, we have to be, you know, we have to learn each and everything in that news. It's very important for our exam. This is our app. If you haven't already downloaded, you can sari information about every exam you will get here. Okay. The first question today is which of the following statement is our true regarding recently conducted digital awareness, digital payment awareness week 2023. Mission Har Payment Digital was launched on the occasion of BPAW 2023. This is true. Her payment digital, which means every payment should be digital. That is the focus of RBI. Payment system operators will adopt 75 villages across the country and convert them into digital payment enabled villages. This is also true. UPI person to person as well as person to merchant transactions in India accounts for 75% of the total digital transactions. This is also true. Okay. Pump and dump recently seen in news relates to which of the following? Ye acha question hai. You will answer this. Abhi humne pura samaj liya hai. Which of the following is the campaign theme of RBI's Digital Payment Awareness Week? Again, you will answer this. What is the theme? Bohut important hai. Ye, this, there's a very high chance that this can come in your exam. Okay, these are the answers. One question from the previous video. We've already discussed this question. Jab bhi hum inflation ki baat karte hai, hum ye teeno topics, ye teeno points ko cover karte hai and I've already given this question. I want you all to answer this question in the comment section below. The weightage of food in CPI is higher than WPI. The WPI does not capture changes in prices of services, whereas CPI does. And the RBI has now adopted WPI as its key measure of inflation and to decide on changing key policy rates. This uh, is, I think, a question from UPSC as well. UPSC has also asked this question. And in our exam, in the ESI section or finance section, mein bhi, this question can be asked. Very important. Hai. Inflation data has al always been important, especially now, because the RBI you know, couldn't tackle inflation for quite some time now. If you have previously seen it in quarters, se, inflation has been beyond 2-6% to 6 target of RBI. Because of that, inflation data or monetary policy data is very important. Hota hai. So this question is again very important. Please answer it if you know it. Okay. So this brings us to the end of the session. I hope you liked it. Thank you.